So last class, I started to calculate some entropy changes. And we looked at the isothermal expansion, which we've studied before. Um, but we did it to calculate changes in entropy. All right, and we did this for the um, reversible and for the constant pressure cases, okay? And we were calculating delta S and delta S surroundings. And the general equation that we always use to calculate delta S is we start with the integral of dQ reversible over T, okay? So even though we might be calculating a delta S for a process that isn't reversible, we still use that same uh, formula because this is the definition of delta S. And for the surroundings, we use this. Okay, so this is dQ surroundings. This is not necessarily reversible. This is for whatever the process is, whether reversible or not. Okay, so this is the actual. And this is always reversible, regardless of what path we're actually talking about. And we use these general equations, plus what we know about isothermal, reversible, and irreversible, aka spontaneous, aka constant pressure expansions to calculate these. So just sort of a little bit of review, because it's good to practice these things. So delta S, dQ reversible over T, Okay, so okay, what is dQ reversible? Well, we know that for an isothermal expansion, we know that delta U is equal to zero. That, that means that dQ is equal to the negative of dW. And when it's reversible, it's just the negative of dW reversible. And we know what dW reversible is. We know that it's minus P dV, where this P here is equal to P external, P gas is P external, we just call it P. So this, um, so this DQ rev, like I said, it's minus DW rev over T, which is, okay, now, DW rev has a negative sign. Minus DW rev does not have that negative sign. Um, does it, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's wrong in my notes. <laughs> Let's fix that. Okay, but that is minus P dV over T, which is minus NRT over T dV. And these T's cancel, they would come out of the interval anyway, but, um, but anyway, they cancel, so we don't care. So this comes out to minus nr times the log of v2 over v1. And this is delta s for an isothermal expansion and not just for a reversible expansion. This is delta s for any expansion, any, excuse me, any isothermal expansion. So this is for the reversible or the constant pressure expansion. Does it matter? And we could always write this as nr log p1 over p2 because t is constant so p1 v1 is p2 v2 okay so that's what we did for the delta s um for the delta s surroundings well for the reversible expansion so now it matters what we actually did what expansion we're actually talking about, because this is DQ serve for the actual process that we're talking about. Um, and, um, and if it's reversible, this is, well, it's always minus DQ. So DQ sir, this is another thing we used probably for the first time last time, that the DQ sir is the negative of DQ. Um, and since it's reversible, it's dQ rev. So you could see where we're going with this. This thing right here and this thing right here, these are negatives of each other. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing again. I'm just gonna show you 
that these are negatives. And so what that means is you're going to end up with the result minus nr log of p1 over p2. And that's delta s served for the reversible isothermal expansion. Okay, but what is delta s surroundings for the constant pressure expansion? All right, we start the same way. Again, this is minus dq over T. Um, and now minus DQ is DW. Okay, and that is minus, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. <laughs> yeah, I did something wrong. No. Huh. Hmm. Wait a minute. It's easy to make a sign error when you're doing this, I'll tell you. Let's see. I think that this should not have a net. Something's oh, okay. So delta oh. Okay, yeah, I was looking at, this is for the, this is delta S. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> I thought I had had a negative sign over here um, because I was looking at the delta S sir one. And um, okay, but I'm fine. So this is minus P um, external DV over T, but now this is minus P2. Remember that P external is P2. So in other words, this, the final pressure of the gas is whatever the external pressure was. Um, and we'd have to over T, right? And now, and that's constant. And T is constant also. So this boils down to minus P2, the integral of dV or minus P2 over T, V2 minus V1. And, and um, this should look a, somewhat familiar because um, it's within a temperature, it's, it's within a factor of T of what the work was um, when we did it for the constant pressure case. I'll show you, this is NRT over P, um, 2 minus nRT over P1. And then we factored like there, we factored out the nRT, but now we're dividing by T. So we'll be able to cancel that. And this becomes one, right? The P2 goes inside minus P2 over P1. And did I forget a negative sign? Yeah, I did. So this is Delta S surroundings for the constant pressure isothermal constant pressure expansion. Okay, so you have two different delta S SIRs that you have to use for the two different situations. This is for constant pressure, and this one over here is for reversible. But you use the same delta S expression. So it's delta S SIR that's different, not delta S. So all of that we did before. In the reversible case, you could see that delta S and delta S sir add up to zero because the expressions are the negatives of each other. And we did the example last time, we got 19.1 and negative 19.1. So when the gas expands and heat goes into the system, and promotes that expansion, you end up with a higher entropy. Those particles are taking up more space, they're able to, they're able to um, dissipate heat better. And, um, and with the reversible case, you end up with a delta S total of zero, okay, which is part of the second law. So we're glad it verified that. For the constant pressure case that we worked on last time now, the delta S and the delta S surroundings, well, it uses this expression here instead of the negative of the 
delta S expression. And this, this was still 19.1. This came out to negative something, 7.48. And that ended up being positive. So that delta S total was positive. All right. Now I, I looked up something over the weekend. You know, how do I explain to students that why, you know, why would the constant pressure expansion uh, generate more entropy than the um, I, than the um, reversible expansion? And um, uh, you know, it. All right. The best I could do was I, I found a, a reference, and it make makes sense to me. I, I guess you could say that whenever something is wasteful, it leads to a positive delta S total. And what's wasteful about this process? You know, why would you say that a constant pressure is wasteful? Well, uh, um, the way I see it, you have a gas, let's suppose the initial pressure of the gas is 10 atmospheres. It can push that hard. It can push for 10 atmos against 10 atmospheres, but at a constant pressure expansion, it might only be pushing against one atmosphere. It still ends up with the same change in volume, but it could have done a lot more work. And so this, um, so sometimes uh, it appears that lost work implies a wasteful um, process which are generally processes that generate entropy. Um, in other words, a positive delta S total. And we're gonna um, get to some other wasteful processes today that I think are even a little bit more like obvious. So, you know, I just spent the last 10 minutes going over what we did at the uh, last bit of class last time. I hope that maybe um, that helped. Maybe it was just whoosh too fast, but it wasn't the first time I did it. So um, I, I, I wanted to go over it again. There's a weekend in between. You're working on a, a quiz that's on different su stuff. So I wanted to go over it. I hope uh, I didn't hope you didn't I didn't blow you out of the water. You guys okay? Okay. I see a few heads nodding. Maybe they're just falling asleep, but you know. <laughs> All right, anyway, I don't think so. So what I'm gonna talk about next is um, heating or cooling. Just a little more space here. And, um, and this is going to be heating or cooling to um, end up with a phase change That's sort of A or B, which is heating or cooling resulting. It's really probably what I should have written here. <laughs> resulting in a phase change or resulting in a change in temperature. So these are the two processes that we're going to talk about next. Um, and you know, when we try to figure out delta S for various processes, we always have to do DQ reversible over T. So I guess that leads to a burning question. And the burning question is, how do you heat reversibly? So what does it even mean? to heat something reversibly, because we have to do that if we're going to be able to calculate the delta S. So what do you think about that? We know how to do an expansion reversibly. We take off a grain of sand at a time. It leads to this incremental um, expansion. You know, you have a slightly lower, infinitesimally lower pressure outside than inside. Now let's take that to the heating realm, okay? So you want an infinitesimal amount of heat to transfer at a time. So what is it, what has to be true about the system and the surroundings for just a little bit of heat to transfer? They have to be this pretty much the same. Same 
temperature. temperature. That's right. Okay, I mean, just like the impossibility, right, of, of having the same pressure inside and out. How do you heat something with the same temperature inside and out? Well, it's not quite the same, okay? It means you have to, so you need the surroundings to be just infinitesimally infinite hotter than the system. So that really the temperature of the system is equal to the temperature of the surroundings, except by an infinitesimal. Okay. So we couldn't do this. We couldn't heat anything reversibly without calculus. <laughs> so here's a picture um, to illustrate this to you. Okay. Adding heat resulting in a phase change. So for example, if I have a sample of liquid water here, all right, and I want to vaporize that water, right? Because I'm talking about a phase change. So I want to vaporize it. Well, I know that the boiling point of water is 373.15. And if I put heat into the system at that temperature, I know that temperature won't change until all the heat has been converted to gas. And I, I have to have a bath that has ba basically the same temperature, but just a little bit more. So if this is 373.15, let's make the bath 373.20. So I'm considering that 0 0.05 degrees C is infinitesimal. It's not, of course. But I could have said 0 0.00000001 degrees C, but you know, for the purposes of this argument, I don't really have to say all those zeros. I think you know what I mean. So what will happen is I keep my bath at 373.20 or infinitesimally higher than the, the water. And this is a very big bath that I've drawn here. You know, or I could even have a heater that's heating my bath up and keeping it, thermostatting it and keeping it at 373.2. And then I'm going to get an infinitesimal transfer of heat. Okay, the heat will have been transferred reversibly. So I'm talking about an infinitesimal at a time. And it's really DQ rev because it's done reversibly. So throughout the entire process, we can say that the temperature of the system, which we just call T, is about equal to the temperature of the surroundings. And that's what we mean by equilibrium when we're talking about heating, right? So we're not, it's not like mechanical equilibrium anymore. It's really uh, temperature equilibrium. Um, now, why would I call this reversible? So what does it mean to be reversible? It means that you can reverse it by changing something by an infinitesimal. So basically, instead of having the temperature of the bath infinitesimally higher than the temperature of the liquid, I could go the other way and I could have the, I could change the temperature. By the way, I probably should put a cover on this or something or that gas is just gonna escape. But, um, so I can have the bath be infinitesimally cooler, and that would cause the heat to go the other way. So this is reversible because I can have the bath. So I could change the temperature of the bath, I guess I should say. Just a little. And the heat will go from the system to the surroundings instead.